the sum of the angles of any triangle that's on the inside always add up to 180 degrees. Something to memorize. The interior angles of any triangle, it doesn't matter how it's drawn, will always add up to 180 degrees. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of any convex polygon is found by using this formula. So those polygons that you usually see, the ones that are convex, okay, so not the concave, use this formula, n minus 2 times 180. n is the number of sides or angles. For example, this one. And it's five, one, two, three, four, five. Notice that if you have five sides, you have five angles. So you could say five sides or you could say five angles. You get the same result. So you add them all together. We would like to know how much they add up to. So they should add up to what this formula would tell us. So plug in the five where the n is. So five minus two is three. And then three times 180 is 540 degrees. So if you were to add these angles on the inside, they would add up to 540 degrees. The sum of the measures of the exterior angles of any convex polygon is 360. This one's easier because it doesn't depend on the number of sides. It does. It could have three sides, five sides, 10 sides. On the outside, those angles are going to always add up to 360 degrees. Find the measure of each interior angle of a regular Decagon. So notice for the for the formula n minus two times one eighty, that gives you the sum of the angles on the inside. So that's all the angles put together. What would one of them equal? So what you do, you start off with a sum. It's a deca decagon. So that means ten sides. You plug in the ten where the n is. Ten minus two is eight. Eight times one eighty. Eight times one eighty gives you a thousand four hundred and forty and 1,440 degrees, but that's all of them put together. So now what we're gonna do is gonna divide these by 10. So that's what you do, divide them by 10, each of those, and that's what the measure of each angle would be. Uh, we're gonna set it up so we could do it on the inside. Find the number of sides of a regular polygon, each of the whose interior angles measures 175. Find the number of sides. So now we're looking for the number of sides. So the interior angle is 175 degrees. So notice we extended this, and this is going to help us because if you were to put these two angles together, there would be 180. It's a straight angle. We're going to take advantage of that fact. So since this is 180 degrees, this would have to be 5 degrees. And you say, well, why are you going to the outside? But well, once you're on the outside, you know that the sum of the angles on the outside is always 360. So now divide the 360, which would be the total for any polygon, and divide it by five. This polygon has 72 sides. Three-dimensional geometry. So this is one-dimensional. That's a visual aid for one-dimensional. This is a visual aid for two-dimensional, so distance, length, and then this is surface. Three-dimensional will remind us of volume, something you could fit in there. So we're working with three-dimensional figures here. These are polyhedron. Polyhedron are th three-dimensional figures whose, whose faces are all polygons. Notice this this polyhedron, what we would call the sides, we call them lateral faces, they're faces. The things that we're looking from the outside without getting inside. Where, they, where these segments meet, they're called vertices. This is a vertex. And then the outline is called the edge. These are edges. This is a base. This is a base. This one, we're highlighting right because the name always includes right or it says oblique. If it's right, we have a 90 de degree angle right here. Notice this is a base. This could be a base. It's a 90 degree angle. It picks up its 
the part of the name it picks up the right is because of the 90 because of the 90 degree angle. Notice if you flatten this, the same figure you flatten it, the same polyhedron, then this is not 90 anymore. We call this an oblique polyhedron. These are pyramids. Notice their basis. This is a rectangle, and the base of this is a triangle. This line segment from the point outside of the base to the base perpendicular, forming a 90 degree angle. This point's called the apex. And the line segment that joins the apex perpendicular to the base is called the height or the altitude. Notice you also have a perpendicular here. This segment is perpendicular on the side, but this is not this height. This is called a slant height. It's called a rectangular pyramid, rectangular because of its space. And there's a triangular pyramid, triangular because of the form of its space. A regular polyhedron, all the faces are congruent, same figure all around. In other words, a regular polyhedron could be made anywhere you look at it, triangles or rectangles. They use the same figure to be created. In fact, there are only five regular polyhedra. Notice how we say polyhedra, that's plural for polyhedron. Why only five regular polyhedron? Because the requirement, once you raise these up, the angles around here, around each vertex, are less than 360 degrees. The sum of the angles around each vertex must be less than 360 degrees. And here's a, a challenging question, why? A hint. Look at the tile. Just imagine these were flat on the surface, on the floor. They would have to be exactly 360, but if you're raising them, these are gonna lose some, some degrees. So it has to be less than 360. The only polyhedra that meet the requirement and can form polyhedron are equilateral triangles, squares, and regular pentagons. Euler's formula is a formula that allows you to compute either the number of faces, edges, or ver vertices that a polyhedron has. But this equation, to be able to use it, you would have to know two of these already. So you would plug them in and find the one that was not known. These are cones. Notice we have a right circular cone and oblique. We go back to the word oblique, it's kind of slanted. Notice the height of a right circular cone is on the inside, perpendicular to the base from the apex. Notice this height would have to be on the outside because it's slanted. This is an oblique, this is a right circular cylinder. Now here are this, excuse me, these were cones, not cylinders. These are cones, I said cylinders. These are the cylinders. So notice the cylinders have two bases. The around is the lateral surface. And if you were to get all the surface, it would be the total surface, but you might just want the lateral surface. We'll see that later. So right circular cylinder. This is an oblique circular cylinder. 